Hello friends, welcome to another video. This video is based on uh, one of the project I was recently working on for one of my client. And uh, the solution was already developed by one of the another Power BI um, developer before me. And uh, the, the ask was that one of the report uh, which was using a data flow as in a data set the refresh time was taking too long and they were not sure it, it, it was not about DAX or data modeling and all this stuff. It is just the data load time connecting to the data flow was taking too long. Basically, uh, they were doing some uh, uh, merging um, during the process and that was taking long. Uh, before I uh, walk through what was the problem and uh, what was the final solution which uh, I came up with, and let's let's first look into the problem um, is in a sample data in Power BI uh, in Microsoft Excel to see what we want to achieve, and then we will look into that how they did it and what turned out to be the final solution. Let's look at the Excel file first. So here I have an Excel file. What they had was a product group called ABCD. I just uh, did a uh, sample data, and then a each product group has the product ID start with. Um, so basically any product ID which starts with the P1 in this particular case is part of the product group A. And same product ID can be in the multiple groups as well. So it means a, a, a product can be in the multiple product groups as well. So just quickly showing the product, I created a sample data for product. So let's say these are the product. P10, P1-1, P2, and, and so forth, so on. So basically, if I'm in a product group A, my the product that starts with the P1 are part of the product group A. So it means these two rows are of the product group because the P1 start, it starts with the P1. So B, it's a P2, so there's only one product for P2. For C, it's a P3, so all these four products part of the P, uh, product group C. Now, when it comes to D, so only product group which start with P3-4, so that means only this product. Let's say if there is another product P3-444, um, so that will be also now part of this output. So, so the, the, because now it is matching P3-4, so basically begins with, uh, with this text. And then the E1 was P1-1, which will be only one this product. So, this is what the uh, the ask was. So this is where um, how they wanted to assign what product belongs to what groups. So basically just quickly show the final result what we were looking for and the same data. So what I have is now if we're looking at that product group A, so P1, so it means it has the two products. And uh, when we in the P uh, with the P2, it has only one product line. When we go to C, it belongs three uh, products which starts with P3 so those all uh, actually they should be P3 4 as well just quickly make sure uh, we are uh, so this would also have another product C with the P3 uh, this is P3 3 and this is P3 4 so in the C uh, product group there will be three four products P3 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 because any product which starts with P3 will be part of this group and then the D group has starts with P3-4. So there's only one product which starts with P3-4. So that would be that one and the E1. So this is how they want the data to be like assigned products to the product group. So let me take you to the Power BI, how they currently did it and what was the final solution. So if you go to the Power BI quickly here. So what I have here is a, again, the product group and just keep in mind, uh, I did a row count. There was around 20,000 approximately products. And then there was approximately 874 or 75-ish product groups. So that was kind of the combination we are looking at. So if you look at the product, so they have a API ID. I don't know that column is not relevant. So they have a product ID for each product, which we just saw in, in a sample data. And then in the product group, I just wanna walk through guys, um, so what I have is this is the group ID, product group ID, and this is the product ID. So basically this particular group ID um, starts with 
9944070 and 99440. So the one product group can be have the multiple starting point as well. So basically any product that starts with this particular code uh, is part of this particular group. So how they did it. So uh, I just showed you this. So this is the basic group data. So approximately if you look at there is a 835 rows as you can see at the bottom. And uh, what you what they did is they created a, a function. So I'm, I'm not going to go into uh, Power BI, uh, the Power Query functions and all this stuff. So basically what was, I will walk through what they did in the function. So in the function, they were passing one parameter to the uh, function, which was the product group as the parameter. Uh, and then and uh, they so what they were doing is looking at the product as a source and then getting the length of the product group like how many long we want to search and then they added a new a um, column in the product table in this function and uh, then selected the rows from that new column which was added to compare it with the product group this was the one way and the other way was simply uh, just if we uncheck this so there were two alternate I think they tried to to see which one worked fast uh, so here in this what in this particular scenario what they did was uh, where the table select source the source is the products text starts with so the in the product ID table which starts with the product group ID so that's kind of uh, how they did it so so this was this function is great it's it's working so finally what they did is once this function was done I'm going to discard the changes and uh, let's go go back to the product group slow. So if we go into the, uh, they added a, a new column called it uh, product ID new. So they call that function, which is FN product group product slow and passing the product ID. So this particular val column value is being passed as the parameter to the function. And so what that function they did again, just to uh, explain, so function took this value and then compared against each product that starts with this value. So and return a table. So here in this case, this particular scenario in the first row, uh, the product ID which starts with the 99440700. So if we see the table, the function return this table. So just quickly. And so so the, here it what the function returned. So it returned approximately like. 10 rows so basically any product in the product table where the product id begin with or starts with 99440700 all those product has been returned so similarly if you we go to like row number four if i click on the empty space of the table you want to make sure uh, click on the empty space because if i click on the table it will expand it so again in this case they wanted any product that id that starts with 99440131 so that is passed to the function and then the function uh, looked into the product table where the product id starts with this value and it returned all the rows so basically the function is doing the job so now once uh, this step was added as a new column and then they in the next step they expanded of course that's what we're going to do and then it expanded the whole table and of course then this is change type and all this stuff now this particular scenario again uh, there's around 834 um, uh, product groups and there is around 19 or 20,000 products and with all this mix and matches what's happening text starts with the product id and the final output which turned out to be was approximately 39,000 rows uh, when this was all expanded. Now, if I close and apply this, the, the way it is currently being set up, it took approximately around two to three hours to make this happen. Uh, again, this is like only 834 product groups and 19,000 products. So each product group line item went to the function uh, compare the value with the product ID starts with and then brought the table back and then the table was expanded. So this particular calculation or the merging or the transformation, whatever you want to call that, took approximately two hours and that was too, too expensive because there was, if uh, think about like if there were more products and more product groups, it would take forever to refresh um, the data. So what was the solution for this again this is where the purpose of this particular video is to talk about the table dot buffer function so i'm going to talk about how that function helped 
to speed up this whole process. So before we do that, let's quickly take a look at the official documentation of the table.buffer. What does that say? Let's look at the uh, Microsoft document. So here in the documentation uh, about table.buffer on, on Microsoft documentation, what it says is buffers a table in memory. So isolating it from external changes during evaluation. And um, to be more further clarify this, note that using this function might or might not take your queries uh, run faster. So again, that doesn't mean every time you use this table.buffer, those queries will run faster. In some cases, it can make your queries run more slowly due to the added cost of reading all the data in the memory. So you have to be very careful. That doesn't mean that every time the table.buffer solution will work. But anyway, in nutshell, what happens is the data get read in the memory and it stays in the memory and then it does not get evaluated if it is used by the uh, other uh, um, functions, downstream functions. So how does this help in our um, solution? And so again, I'm going to go back to uh, the same thing. So what I had is I made a copy of the product group, which is a slow and I made a another copy of the uh, same table in, in, in this uh, in a demo. So I have the product groups table again, I just quickly talk about um, here what we did is so again going to the renamed columns. It's, it's uh, this is how the product group table is up to this step. And uh, if you remember after renamed column, we added, we call that function to um, process the data and to text start with. So what I did is I enhanced that function a little bit further. So let's look at the new function. What does that look like? So this is again, FN product group product is a function created. It has now two parameters. What are those two parameters? The first parameter is again, I think this parameter is called wrong. It should be called product ID. But anyway, the parameter is the product ID, which we want to look uh, and then in which table we want to look. So now there is a second parameter which I'm passing to the function, which is a table name. So what I'm doing is, so again, the rest of the stuff is same. Source is equal product because that's what we are passing it as in a parameter. And then then rest of the text dot, um, uh, starts with or or adding a new column. I was testing few things so you can use any one of these functions. So basically the enhancement what I'm doing is I am created a, a change of function, added a another parameter and passing the table name, the product as part of the uh, parameter to the um, uh, to the function. So how did that help? Um, so going back to our product group uh, table. So if I go to the renamed step, which is our last step, uh, uh, the step where we read all the data from product group. After this, I manually added a another step, which is a I called it a product or I should call it a product buffer. Uh, let's rename it. Uh, re or load tab product table. So I added a, a through the advanced editor. I added a row where I took the products table in which we are looking the product IDs and use a table dot buffer function. So what I did is I loaded that product table in the memory so that it does not get evaluated all the time. Now it is in the memory. So what happens is in the next step, I'm doing the same thing as in the in the other uh, uh, example, we looked into that the the slower example. So I'm calling my new function, which I created FN product group products. That's the name of the function. So before I was only passing only product ID. Now what I'm passing is I'm also passing it my product table, which is stored in the buffering uh, product table. Um, uh, it, it, it's stored in that step. So basically now I'm passing the product ID, which I want to look and also I'm passing the product table, which is in the memory to that function. So what, what happens is because now uh, the product table is in the memory. It is not every time it getting evaluated. And now uh, uh, from here onward, all rest of the steps are the same. We we just, uh, if we look into this 9944700, again, if I click on the empty white space here, I see, um, I should see the preview here, uh, whatever. So the final result is more or less the same and then expand and change type into filter rules. But what happened is after I did this small change, loading two changes I did, loaded the product table in a memory 
as added as a step. So before adding a new column to call the function, which actually search for the product IDs, I put my product table in the memory and then I enhance the function, uh, which is searching for those or text.start where it is looking for the product IDs in the product table. I'm passing a which product ID what I want to look for and also I'm passing the product table as part of uh, to the function. So since the product table is in memory and the, 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 the processing is much, much faster. Again, I said previously in the slow example, in the original example, it was taking around two to three hours to run this 19,000 product with 834 groups. But with this table.buffer, it runs approximately within a minute or so. So from two hours, two and a half hours, to less than a minute, that's like insane. That's like with just two small changes and we got like lightning fast uh, data refresh and all that stuff is happening. Again, this is a very, very um, small change. Um, we don't use these functions that often. I don't use these functions that often since I ran into this issue for me, it was like, okay, why this such a small data set is taking so long to combine together. And then I came up with the table dot buffers um, turn out to be the final solution. Maybe there is another way. Let me know if you know other way to how you can solve this. Um, but I guess uh, this is my, uh, how I get to know table.buffer. I knew this function before, but never had a chance to use it since I used it at really, really uh, uh, how fast this whole refresh has happened now. It's amazing. Again, um, I hope you like this video. Uh, do subscribe my channel. Until next video, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.